everyone, welcome back. It's Charlotte from At Charlotte's House. This ottoman that I am sitting on cost me $13, but it did not look like this when I brought it home. See how I started, see what I did, stay tuned. how simple it can be to reupholster an old piece of furniture that might look a little shabby at first glimpse, but with a little elbow grease, a little bit of know-how, you can transform it and it can be a new piece of furniture. When I saw this ottoman at the ReStore, I knew it had potential. The construction was solid, the size was great, and the fabric and foam, although dated, were in really good shape, so I wasn't too worried about any major stains or ickiness underneath when I removed it. I have a lot to learn about upholstery, but I have gotten better. One thing I know for sure is that removing the existing fabric and using it as a template makes everything so much easier. I used my staple remover and needle nose pliers to remove the original fabric from the ottoman. Take pictures. These will help you remember not only how it was assembled, but also the order in which all of the pieces were attached. For this ottoman, that meant removing all of the pieces of the skirt first. Once the skirt was removed, I had to remove the top staples from the muslin dust liner in order to remove the cushion cover itself. Reminder that all upholstery pieces are unique, so you might find a similar ottoman that has been put together a little differently. Pay attention as you're removing the fabric and save everything you can. Once I took off the single button tuft in the middle, I could remove the cover. I'm recovering this with the lovely blue velvet I picked up at the flea market ages ago, so technically the cost of fabric for me was zero dollars. I traced the old fabric pieces onto the velvet and cut it out. In my case, that meant one large circle for the top of the ottoman and a long strip that would end up being the sides of the seat. And then for the skirt, it was a series of rectangles. My flaps were lined, so I cut out and ironed a twin cotton sheet to sew in place as a liner. The assembly of each flap was pretty basic. Essentially, the liner is a couple inches smaller than the fabric itself, so that when you sew it all together, the fabric will naturally fold over about an inch and you won't have any visible liner. Another thing I saved from the original ottoman was the stiff fabric interfacing that I found inside each flap. This helps the skirt keep its shape. I may not have needed it because my velvet was a pretty thick fabric, but I had them, so I figured why not use it. Once I'd stitched the edge of each flap, I turned them inside out and inserted the interfacing. To hide the liner, each end was folded over and pressed and sewn across the top seam. The last thing that I needed to sew was the piping. I used to be so intimidated by piping until I got a piping foot. It's about $5 and it's a game changer. The piping foot goes onto your sewing machine and the cording and the fabric just feeds right inside the groove and it makes it so easy to sew. I cut strips of fabric on the bias, which means diagonally. You do this to allow more flexibility from your piping so it can wrap around the edges of your upholstery a little bit easier. Sew the ends of each strip together to make a nice long strip and then fold it around your cotton cord and feed it through your piping foot and sew. I sewed the side strips onto the top circle with the piping sandwiched in the middle. Then I turned this inside out and I pulled it over the top of the ottoman and stapled it underneath with my pneumatic stapler. Whenever I reupholster something, I'm careful to work back and forth to keep the fabric tight. I glued fabric around the original button tuft threaded it down through the top of the ottoman and secured it in place inside the base of the ottoman where it had been tied down before. After I secured the seat and the bottom tuft, I reattached the muslin dust skirt. I ended up using the one that came with the ottoman just so I didn't have to take apart the casters on the bottom. I flipped the ottoman upside down and stapled piping along the edge of the top cushion. The last step was to reattach the flaps. The fabric got to be pretty bulky, so I was really happy to have my pneumatic stapler. Something I learned early on with my upholstery projects was that a good stapler is imperative. 
There is nothing more frustrating than a staple gun that jams or doesn't get through your material. Is this reupholstered ottoman perfect? Nope but it's a million percent better than the ottoman I started with. Most importantly, it's a ton better than the first piece of furniture I upholstered years ago. So I'm learning and getting better. What I love about practicing upholstery on furniture like this is that it cost me $13. And because I had fabric on hand, I didn't have to spend a lot of money on that either. So for the cost of $13, I'm essentially just getting a chance to practice my upholstery. And that's totally worth it for me. I would say this is the glow up of the month. I am so pleased with how this turned out. I would put this blue velvet ottoman in any single room in my house and I would not have said that about the ottoman that came home with me from the ReStore. Thank you so much for watching. Please leave me a comment if you have any questions or if you just want to share your opinion. I love hearing from you guys. Don't forget to click on that little bell icon so you will get notified when I share videos in the future. Have a great day everyone. This blue velvet ottoman would work in any single room in my house and I would not have said that about the ottoman that I brought home first.